This edition of the Riddler Report is brought to you by ShireSociety.com All right, I'm standing here with Mike, and what's your last name, Mike? Berna. It's spelled B-E-R-N-A. And what organization are you with again? Rescue 3 International. Okay. Uh, question for you. You are a Katrina veteran. I am. Uh, you served for two weeks, uh, not in New Orleans, but in the area of the Katrina disaster. Uh, and were you were you in Mississippi or New Orleans? I was in Gulfport, I mean, Mississippi. That's correct. Uh, not a, did you get across the border to Louisiana at all? Or no, uh, not okay. at all. I was uh, dispatched or deployed with one of the federal USAR teams, and uh, we were one of the first USAR teams to make landfall in Gulfport, Mississippi. To, to what extent uh, did you find that the federals? You know, there's this there's this legend uh, that has some truth in it. I don't know exactly how much truth. That the federals went went around and a lot of locals went around taking people's guns. Did you experience or see any of that? I did not. Matter of fact, uh, the locals we encountered were very friendly, uh, thankful we were there, and certainly we reached out and helped them any way we could. Was there any uh, sort of uh, was anyone uh, in terms of what you saw anyone forced to leave their home? No. Okay. And uh, you, you, uh, during the I guess it was a two two week period. What what? date did you get there? Uh, I really don't remember. I know. Okay. I, I think uh, the storm made landfall on a Tuesday morning. I believe we were there Wednesday afternoon. And I will tell you the Gulfport area was absolutely devastated. Uh, the area we searched, there were no standing structures and uh, there really were no places for, for homeowners to even stay. Right. So they all wanted out by the yes, time absolutely. we were there to take them back. Uh, and so what was your primary role? It was uh, basically, uh, urban search and rescue, uh, performing search operations and trying to dig th- through some of the structures and check the structures to see if there were any survivors. Okay, okay. Uh, well, I'm sure that, you know, I have no doubt that you had to take a lot of uh, personal physical risks, and I, I appreciate that. Um, I am wondering, uh, to what extent did you find that, um, that, that the federal involvement, did it interfere at all with the local and local rescue efforts? No, and actually, you know, and I, I was part of that federal involvement with being with the federal USAR team, but uh, again, the, the local jurisdiction was so overwhelmed, we were their first help that arrived. Uh, imagine meeting a fire chief or firefighters, they didn't even know if their families survived the event. They couldn't even tell you what street we were on because their community was totally devastated. So uh, it, it, it was a life learning lesson for me, and uh, it certainly drives home the fact that we need to be pre- better prepared, just like the event we're running here today. By we, do you mean the authorities or the people? I mean the, the people. Uh, you know, we're all here to help each other, and uh, through local, state, and federal partners, we should all have a good flow, and we should all be able to work together in a seamless operation, and I know that's not a perfect world, but we should strive to get to that. What would you say the mo- was the most the thing that you're most proud of, of what you did during the two-week period? Uh, just, you know, again, helping the local folks. Uh, you may see some stragglers, and uh, they were thirsty, hungry, and beat up, and it was nice to uh, to help them out and get them to a safe place. And when they said thank you, uh, that meant an awful lot. All right. Well, Mike, I much appreciate your time in answering probably some unconventional questions. <laughs> it's okay. It's very good. Thank <laughs> you right, very much. much. Okay. I should probably record the exact name of the organization. Rescue, uh, I'm Rescue 3 International. Rescue 3 International. Yeah, that's okay. who I teach for. So it's a, it's a third party. Okay. The old world is collapsing, and it's going to take its slave driver governments with it. But what will rise up in their place? In New Hampshire, the Shire Society has a plan, a thriving web forum, and a history of action. It didn't take long to come up with a plan. You can sign up right now at ShireSociety.com.